but let's start with Charles. The lead up to the coronation will be almost as interesting as the coronation itself. King Charles has family members to manage, Commonwealth countries to liaise with and expectations to meet. With so many moving parts and the sands constantly shifting, it's going to be quite the balancing act. The royal family took a bit of a hit to their popularity in the aftermath of the release of Spare. But despite the allegations, the family are still keeping mum and sticking to core business, which frankly is probably best. You don't put out a fire by giving it oxygen. And while the consequences of Spare are still being felt, they're not necessarily as damaging to the rest of the family as they are to the prince himself. More on that later in the show. But back to Charles and his relationship with the Commonwealth. This week, the King wrote to New Zealand to share his condolences after the country was battered by deadly floods last week. Nothing surprising there, and an entirely appropriate gesture from the King. What has raised eyebrows is that he referred to New Zealand as Otaroa New Zealand. Now, I make no comment on whether that was an appropriate or inappropriate thing to say. That's not really the point I'm making. What is noteworthy is Charles is clearly cognizant of how the monarchy is perceived in Commonwealth countries and he's attempting to appear less starchy and less imperialistic than the monarchy of old. It's only a minor thing, but it illustrates the power of perception. Here in Australia, our $5 note won't have King Charles' portrait on it to replace the Queen's. The Reserve Bank of Australia has announced that the $5 note will instead have an Australian depiction. Again, this has ruffled some feathers. And the conversation about local identity is not just being discussed here in Australia and in other former colonies. Back in the motherland, even Britons are wondering about the nature of the future relationship between the Commonwealth and the UK. They acknowledge our history is deeply enmeshed, but that over time we've developed our own identities, personalities and pathways. In an article in The Times this week, it suggested that King Charles should be bold and set Australia free. To be honest, I don't think there's any right or wrong answer. Rather, it's a generational conversation worth having after the passing of such a big presence, that was the Queen, and in the ushering in of a new era of monarchy. In a way, we're all finding our feet here, and every day is a good day for self-reflection.